welcome back everyone. Today we're looking at a couple of things that are going to be useful, the if statement, and two operators. The first one is and, the second one is or, and we're going to combine those with the if statement to let's do some pretty neat stuff. So we finished the previous lesson on these two errors there, and let's take a look at what actually happened. So our formula was going to take the rate and divide it by the pay hours that match with its guarantee. And on this first error, it says did not find value, and it just gives me a quotation mark in the lookup evaluation. And what this quotation mark means is nothing. So essentially, the formula tried to find this blank cell in our list of guarantees and because there isn't one it said well I can find it so here's an error for you which is fair enough and the other one said uh, function divide parameter 2 expects number values but na is text and cannot be coerced in a number to a number so what this somewhat complicated sentence says is well flat that's not a number and even though I did find it in there uh, and it returned NA, the NA is also not a number, and so I can't, um, I can't uh, do anything with that. I can't divide by NA. That's just not mathematically possible. So we're going to have to find a way to, to solve for those two things. Um, so for that, we're going to use an if statement. So let's add a sheet to understand how they work. Uh, and then we're also going to look at and and or. All right, so I'm going to create a very simple table. Uh, let's say we have our position, our rate, guarantee, and then we're going to fill that with a little bit of data. So director, 500 for 12. Here we're going to leave a blank, but I'm going to put a rate. And here I'm going to put a producer, 500 for 12. Okay, so it's somewhat similar to our cool list. Uh, next, I want to know if there is a value in column B. How do I do that? Well, that's super simple. For that, we use the if statement. So I'm going to start my formula. I'm going to say if, open parenthesis. And what does the if statement want? It wants a logical expression. And then after that, a comma, and it wants to know what to do if that logical expression returns true. And finally, what if that logical expression returns false? So true, false, all that might still be a little bit confusing, but let's look at it in practice. So my logical expression is going to be, hey, I want to know if there's something in column B. And to say that, we're going to say B2. And then I'm going to use this little notation where I'm using my two little brackets, so smaller than and bigger than, and then two quotation marks. And the quotation marks in, in Excel or Google Sheets, they're usually used for a string. Like when you run a, you want to write text in a formula, you put it in between quotation marks. If you don't put anything, this means nothing. And this whole syntax means, is there something in this cell? So that's my logical expression. I'm going to then put a comma, and then I need to, do, I need to tell you what to do if it's true and if it's false. In our case, we're just going to say, well, if, if it's true, if there's something in the cell, just say yes. And if it's false, then say no. And we're going to close the parenthesis. I'll hit enter, and it tells me there is something in there. So now if I drag my formula down, I should have yes in every single column. That works. And if, let's say, I was to remove this rate, here we go. It switches to no. So that's that's your if statement. It's super, super basic. You just have to figure out, okay, what do you want to test and what to return in both cases. And it's important that you have both cases. Otherwise, if I, if I don't specify that and then I do this, okay, it's going to give me a false. So it's just not I'm just gonna say false by default. So generally speaking, you're gonna want something that tells you what to do if it is it's false. All right, then uh, we're gonna ask if there's this time a value in B and C. All right, 
So to do that, we're going to start the same way. Actually, why don't we go ahead and copy our formula. So I'm copying this and then I'm pasting it in there. And this time we need to change this logical expression. It's not just like, hey, B2, uh, uh, I want to know about B2 and C2. So if we were to just do C2 this time, we would just change that and essentially we'd look at C2 and it would tell us yes or no again. So we should have yes, no, yes this time because there's nothing right here in C3. But this time, because I want to combine both of them, I'm going to use the AND operator. So I'm just going to type AND. Actually, let's, let's start by looking at, a, at it by itself. So if I say equal AND, and open the parentheses, it tells me I want my first logical expression, then a comma, and then I want my second logical expression. And I can repeat that as many times as I want. If I have three, four, a hundred different uh, logical expressions, I can do that. So here, what we'll need to do is we'll want to know if there's something in B2. We've already done that earlier. And then our second one is going to be the same thing, but for C2. And that's going to be our criteria. So if I hit enter, it's going to tell me, well, that's true. And if I drag down, it's going to tell me that's false. Because just like we did earlier with the if, it's returning true or false. But here we just, in this formula, we're not specifying anything as far as what to do next. So I'm just going to copy my little statement, the n, b2, and c2, copying that. And then I'm going to go into my if statement. And where I have my logical expression, I'm going to nest my, my end function with my two criteria. And, and nothing else changed. So make sure you're you know, in between the, the parentheses of the if and the first comma. I'm going to hit enter. We're going to delete what's on the right just to see more clearly. And then when we drag this down, it's going to tell me no because it looked. And yes, there was something in B, but there's nothing in C. So it has to return no. Um, just very quickly, let's do value in B or C. And for that, we can just simply copy this formula. And the only difference is instead of and, we're going to say or. And it works the exact same way where I get you know, prompted for my logical expressions and can use as many as I want. So I hit enter and it tells me yes, and I should get three yeses because I always have something in at least one of the two. If I delete this, then I get a no. All right, so how is this useful? Well, now that we can build this if statement, we can influence how a formula behaves. So let's go back to the crew list and let's think about what we can do to prevent these errors from happening if there is something or nothing in the cells. So let's start with our uh, blank row. And I'm going to open up the formula bar here bar to give us more room. Uh, that's going to let us sort of um, put our formula across multiple rows just so that we can see more uh, clearly. So let's start with our if statement. So if, and I'm going to open the parentheses, and then if you want to put something to the next row in the formula bar, you're going to hold Alt and hit Enter. Up and it goes to the next line. So this that's gonna this is gonna be one of our true um, or false uh, statement, right? We, first we need a, a logical expression, and then if you know there's something in those two cells, then we want this formula to run. Otherwise, we're not gonna do anything. So to do that, we'll say we need to look at E3, right? So column E, row three. So E3 has something in it, then, so I put my comma, then I want it, and you can see in the, in the little box, it says, okay, now when my value is true, so if there's something in E3, then run the formula, and I'm gonna put another comma, and what to do if it's false? I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to the next line just to see more clearly. If it's false, I wanna do nothing. So I just put two quotation marks, 
and that says just do nothing. And if I close the uh, parenthesis, it's going to change. And now instead of having an error, I have nothing because it looked at column E and it's a nothing, so it moved it moved on. But what if I type a rate? Uh, still get an error. So that's where we need our AND operator in there. So I'm going to go back in my formula and I'm just going to go to the next line to see more clearly. I'm going to type AND, open the parentheses, E3 is blank, add a, add a comma in there. I also want to know about F3. Okay, and I'm going to close my parentheses. It's very important that you close parentheses at the right moment. This is my end statement. And once I closed it, then the, the if statement resumes. If I don't close it, then I'm still in the end, and it's going to think that my formula here is part of the end statement. So if E3 is blank and F3 is blank, then comma, then do this. Otherwise, do nothing. And I hit enter. And here we go. Now we're good. If I add a guarantee, I get the calculation. If I remove any of those, then I get nothing. All right. So let's uh, let's drag this up to adjust the formula we had above. That worked. And let's drag this down. All right. Even though this all of this still works, we still have an error here. And we have two ways of solving this. Either we can nest another if statement. Essentially, you can have as many as you want. You could you can add an if at the top that specifies a new logical expression, and on true, it would run the second if statement, or on false, it would do something else. Uh, you can do that, and you could say, like, well, if uh, F3 says, or F4 says flat, then... Um, you know, just divide by one, something like that, or just do nothing because we don't want anything in the early rate. But we're going to look at a different type of if that exists out there that's very handy to remove errors or just like little little errors here and there that we can do without. Um, in this case, because I'm never going to want something in the hourly column when I'm dealing with a flat rate, I'm going to use this formula called if error. And you can see it in the list here. I'm going to select it, um, and if error has the following syntax, it says what to do if there's no error, and what to do if there is an error. And so in our case, you know, we just open our if error, so what to do if there's no error, well, that's run our if statement all the way till the end, and if there's an error, so I'm going to put a comma to go to the next argument, if there's an error, well, so do nothing again. And I'm close my parentheses, hit enter, and we see here now the error has been uh, hidden away. Now, the, the if error uh, function is actually really easy to use, and you don't even need that second statement. By default, the if error will just do nothing if there's an error, so I can even remove my little uh, comma and do nothing, hit enter, and it still works. So now I'm going to drag this down and also drag it up. And I'm left with a formula that works whether there is a flat, whether there's no guarantee, no rate, or guarantee without a rate. It works no matter the situation. And I'll always have something that looks nice without any little pesky errors showing in there. So that's it for today. Uh, in the next lesson, we're going to look at the import range function, which is going to let us link multiple spreadsheets together. And it is really handy, especially when we work with multiple people or when we create templates.